Hi everyone, my name is Aubrey and I'm joining you today from the Weaving Influence headquarters in Lambertville, Michigan, as is Becky in our webinar studio. Um, I just want to thank you for joining us today for our book marketing Q&A. And before we begin, I have a few technical considerations to share with you. Um, we are going to be recording this event and we will send out some follow-up materials with the recording. So feel free to share this with others. Uh, who might benefit from learning a little more about book marketing and sharing with you know all of your questions and answers that we're going to get to today. Additionally, we do have a Facebook group that I will link to in the follow-up email as well. Uh, and there you can also feel free to ask questions. We're creating a community of people there who are you know like you and who also have questions and we're doing our best to answer everything we can and create a fun place for everyone to share information. So if you'll take a few moments to find the question panel within the GoToWebinar platform, feel free to ask any questions you have throughout today's 30-minute webinar. And before we begin, I'll just do a quick introduction of Becky for anyone who may not be familiar. Becky is the founder and CEO of Weaving Influence here in Lambertville, Michigan. She has helped our team successfully launch nearly 100 books, which is super exciting. And Becky is a mom of three daughters, a wife. She loves running, reading, and coffee. Hi, Becky. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Aubrey. Thanks. You know, I'm super curious how people got to us today, and I would love to see them try out the question panel and tell us, you know, did you find out about this event through an email from us or through our Facebook group or through some other means? And uh, just say hi. Tell us where you are. Um, here in Lambertville, we had 60 degrees in sunshine yesterday, which was absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, today it's a little bit cooler, but um, it doesn't feel like November, that's for sure. We have so. a couple of answers here. We had um, a couple people saying that they found out about us through an email. Um, let's see, we have someone calling in from Kansas City, another one saying email. Um, Hometown Reads is an answer here. Phoenix, 80 degrees, that would be nice. Um, I don't know about 80 degrees. No? If it's 80 degrees, I don't want to go running. <laughs> oh, that's true. Um, we have Albany, New York, and email. San Antonio, email. Um, let's see. Oh, we already have a question here. Are you ready to dive into the questions? Uh, I sure am. I would love to answer Jim in Roanoke's question. So Jim, you have a book coming with a publisher. Um, I don't know if I saw how soon the book is coming, but you want to know what you should be doing in advance of publication. Um, and that's a great question. So I always tell people, um, and if you've not participated in one of our webinars before, that we envision the book launch process in four phases. And the first one is the building phase. So the building phase can begin anytime um, before your book comes out and the purpose of the building phase really is to build the content connections and um, contacts um, that will fuel um, your book marketing efforts. Um, so Jim, if you can maybe clarify for me how long it is before your book launches. Um, the other thing would be to really be thinking about your online presence and if you don't have a website already, every book launch campaign really needs a center. And the center needs to be a place that you own and control. And so with our clients, we work on establishing either a book marketing page on their website or on a, um, a, a book marketing website. And a lot of that depends upon whether you plan on writing one book or whether you plan on writing many books. If you plan on writing many books, we recommend an author website. Um, if you plan on writing one book, then a website for your specific book. Um, can be really helpful. So in advance of a book launch, one of those key priorities is to have a center for your book marketing efforts, and the other is to build as many contacts, connections, and content in advance of the launch. Now, you might think that contacts and connections are the same, and and they are differentiated. When I say connections, I mean you want to have as many connections on social media, so building your LinkedIn following, building your Twitter following, connecting to people on Facebook, those are your connections. Your contacts are uh, your email marketing database, and it's exceedingly important um, to, prior to launch um, to have an email list 
of people who are, have given you permission to hear from you and who uh, with whom you can communicate as you lead up to your book launch. And so um, if you haven't already begun that, um, that's one of the key items to do as you approach the release of your book. It looks like there might Jim be a follow-up question, knows. about a year. So Jim, if you're yeah. about a year out from your launch, um, that's great. Uh, you know, that means that you have time to prepare. And uh, so, like I said, you want to think about being established with the website. Um, and a year away from your book launch is not too early to start sharing your journey toward um, launching your book with your online connections. We have some clients who have really gotten great um, support and encouragement from um, even posts telling about the different milestones of the journey. And you can start with, you know, hey, I'm celebrating and a, a photo of however it is that you're celebrating. I'm celebrating the fact that, you know, I just um, signed a contract with my publisher. And then, you know, as you go through those steps, like, oh, I'm editing the book now, you know, um, I'm uh, sending in the final edits, you know, I, I just received the first cover. Um, you can share that journey as an author with your connections. And um, quite often those people are going to be really excited for and with you about that. And then you can also give teasers along the way about what the content in the book is um, to be able to see who in your network might be interested in that. So, Jim, I hope that's helpful. Um, I would definitely encourage you to join our Facebook group. Um, and there are several free resources on our website related to um, book launches, including an ebook that I wrote a few years back called Your Book Deserves a Celebration. So, that might be a good starting place for you. And uh, if we can be of further help, uh, let us know. But, congratulations on that contract. That's very exciting. Okay. Um, another question we have is how effective are Facebook parties? You know, I think that that probably depends upon the author and and who their network is and also the topic of the book. Um, I always say, you know, something like a Facebook party um, requires very little investment compared to an in-person party and so experimentation is great. Um, and I would say, you know, try it and see how it works for you or you can always check with other authors to see um, how it's worked for them. You know, I had a call yesterday with an author um, and her first book is set to come out I think in about four months and she mentioned to me that she tried Facebook Live for the very first time and um, really was so pleasantly surprised at the great response that she got at how easy it was at you know the number of questions and comments that she had and really for her a confirmation that she's on the right track with the content that she's creating in the world so something like a Facebook live experiment of, of doing a video and seeing what kind of response you get might only take five or ten minutes out of your day but it can give you really important data about what you might want to do in the future so I would always weigh, you know, the amount of investment versus the amount of possible return. And if, if it's not a huge investment, then why not try anything? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are there user groups or reviewer groups that you would recommend? Huh, so that's a great question. Um, I assume that you're talking about um, user groups, you know, people out there in the world who might be willing to review books. Um, I, I don't necessarily have any strong recommendations. Our team does uh, work with a group that we developed called Team Buzz Builder, and they're a list of people who are interested in business and leadership books. Um, and you know, I think the support from Team Buzz Builder uh, for the clients who partner with us is unparalleled. Um, I think otherwise, depending upon your genre, it, it's helpful to again experiment. Um, our team has not done as much work around fiction um, but other authors are a really great source of information about that so I would encourage any of you who need that kind of input to either join one of our hometown reads groups if we're in your location or our general book marketing group and just ask others. Um, what I've found is that the author community is full of people who are willing to share best practices and experience with others. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay, this one is a little bit longer, but um, we have this one here. My novel was published last year. What do you recommend I concentrate on now? I've done launch events, a newsletter, festival sales, book club visits, and more. I expect the next novel to be in print two years from now. Advice. 
Sure. Well, so what I what I know about marketing fiction is that quite often that second book is really key because as people discover the second book, then they'll go back and read the first book. So I guess my first bit of advice would be if there's any way at all to speed up the arrival of those other books, particularly if it's part of a series, that's really going to help you get a super lot of traction with sales on the first title. Um, as it relates to what you do once a book's been out for a while, um, you know, focus, consistent effort over time is really critically important. I would say, you know, great that you're doing a newsletter. You might want to consider in what way you can attract more possible readers to your subscriber list, and perhaps they'll be finding out about your book for the first time. Um, and so in this time in between books, you know, if you can focus on growing your list of subscribers, um, maybe by doing some guest posts or other exchanges with other fiction authors um, so that you get exposure to readers, you know, you could look for um, other authors who have blogs who might have a, a following of readers that's similar to yours because, I mean, the great thing about fiction is if you love to read fiction, then you always want to read more fiction that's like the fiction you've you've enjoyed. And, um, and so doing some type of exchange with another author who has a similar audience could be helpful. You know, perhaps doing some giveaways to attract more um, subscribers to your email uh, database. You know, asking whenever possible, if you know someone's read your book, ask for reviews. Those reviews are very important social proof. Um, you could also try um, some type of um, ebook type giveaways like BookBub and having a lower price on your Kindle edition for a short time in order to attract more buyers and, and from that more reviewers can be a really helpful strategy. Um, so there's just a few thoughts. I hope those are helpful. Um, I love the idea of, of the local events. Um, I think the more you can get out there with people who love to read books and interact with readers, um, the more possibilities there are. So um, I would say it sounds like you have a really good approach and um, you know, speed up the arrival of the second book and uh, stay focused and consistent over time and showing up. Thank you. Sure. Um, Becky, can you quickly list the four phases of, of um, book launching again? I sure can. So we envision the book um, launch process in four phases. Uh, the first one is building, um, and that one can be, you know, from the time you even dream of writing a book until the book comes out. Um, you always want to be in that building process. Even once the book comes out, you the, the building is one that really um, endures through all of it. Building, working is um, the phase that comes right up to launch, and I usually envision that as about the three months before your launch, when you're really putting your strategic plans in place and doing all of kind of the intense effort around preparing for that launch. The third phase is launching, and we envision that as a week or month in which you focus a lot of energy and momentum around getting the word out and getting strong sales at the start. And then the phase after launching is advancing, which is any of those efforts once the book is out that you do to keep your book in the conversation. And again, that blends back into building because as you want to advance and keep your book in the conversation, you also want to always be building the possible audiences for your title, something that we can never stop. It's, it's kind of like, um, not to get political, but it's kind of like being a, a candidate who's thinking about running uh, for office and, you know, months, years, decades in advance of putting your name on the ballot, you're really working to have your name be known and have people um, be supporting and following you. Um, okay. Can you recommend paid marketing for print versions? AMS is great, but only for ebooks. Um, AMS, that's probably like, uh, can you read the question again, Aubrey? I'm not quite sure I understand it. Yes. C can you recommend paid marketing for print versions? AMS is great, but only for ebooks. Yeah, so I, don't, I, I guess I need clarification on what you mean by paid marketing. Um, there's a wide range of, uh, of ways that you can invest in marketing. Um, you know, some some people see a lot of traction from Facebook advertising, for example, which could apply to an ebook or it could apply to a print book. Um, obviously, there's uh, the road, and our last um, our last webinar was about public relations and really seeking out those media opportunities to be featured in articles and interviews on on radio or in print uh, magazines or on digital outlets. Um, so there are lots of different ways obviously in marketing your book that you can pay someone to help you. Um, I am not um, familiar particularly with Amazon market services so I can't comment on that. Um, 
but if you want to clarify what you mean by paid marketing or you know if I haven't fully answered your question and you want to clarify I'm happy to try again <laughs> okay um, I'll keep an eye on, on that but we can move to the next one until we get sure. more, a new answer um, what's a good budget for book for a book marketing campaign Wow, well, you know, that really is individual to each author, and also it, it depends upon how much time you want to personally invest in the effort. Um, so what a good budget is around book marketing, like, you know, there could be a wide range, and, and it depends upon what those components are. Um, and I really do think it's also an individual decision that's somewhat driven by the expectation of the return on the investment. So when we work with business book authors, um, it's very clear to us that the return on investment that they're looking to achieve is, you know, more of work booked and consulting, more speaking engagements, and those things quite often bring a high level of revenue. And so for a business book author, it makes sense to invest that one level um, because the return is going to be at another level. Um, you know, for an independent author or a fiction author just starting out, um, it might not make sense um, to invest as much. Um, however, the one thing that's super clear to me is that if you don't invest something, whether it's time, energy, money, um, not really much will happen. We all know, you know, how much noise there is in the market, how difficult it is to, to find a an audience for your book um, and so to not do any marketing whether it's you know doing it yourself or hiring someone is a, is a recipe for disappointment in terms of really not having your book reach the audiences that you want it to reach um, I was reminded of that um, actually yesterday because my team member and I recently hired a coach to help us with really understanding how to market a course that we've built and I realized in a way that that I'm doing exactly what I tell authors to do I'm, I'm scared and nervous about working with the coach and about whether we'll get the right results but I know that apart from making a different investment or trying a different approach with the course then we're never ever going to get any results and that's how it is with book marketing you have to do something in order to get results you might have to do something different than what you're currently doing and it might be scary so Definitely. no direct answer there sorry if you were looking for a dollar amount I'm not gonna uh, say one out loud it really is such an individual decision Okay, this question is from Denise. She says, hi Becky, I have about 450 contacts in my constant contact for my blog, but I have almost 7,000 emails in my personal database. Cleaned up would be about 4,000. I handpicked my constant contact list, but how would you recommend utilizing the 4,000 contacts in my personal database? That is an excellent question, and hi Denise. I hope you are doing well. Um, I think that you're on my list for outreach actually. Um, anyhow, um, so this is really tricky um, and we, we can definitely point you to some resources or I could send you a PDF with some things that we've written up. The difficult thing is that um, adding people to an email marketing list when they haven't given you permission can be quite dicey for one for a few reasons. One reason is um, even if people love you, they, they might not take very kindly to be added to being added automatically to your email marketing list. Um, I know that I've noticed before I meet someone and then suddenly I'm on their list and I didn't ask to be on their list. Now I might like them, I might be interested in what they're doing, um, but I don't like kind of the imposition of being added to email marketing. So you want want to be really, really careful of your relationships and how, how you handle them. The second part is that you're also setting yourself up potentially um, to spam complaints because if you do add some people who don't want to be added, you know, there's a couple of options. One is they can unsubscribe. The other is uh, they can report you for spam. Um, and so there are federal guidelines that regulate um, how, I think they're federal guidelines, maybe I'm speaking like too, too assuredly. There are guidelines that, um, that, that uh, regulate email marketing. So really the only pure way to build an email marketing list is to have people give you permission. And typically that permission is through an opt-in. Um, on your website or um, maybe an in-person opt-in where someone you know signs a list and says yes you know add me to your email marketing so in order to get around that uh, what we have done with clients is what we call like an opt opt-out or opt-in email where you might send 
to that list of 4,000, you might send a blind copy email where you copy paste, say, 50 email addresses at a time from your Outlook or your Gmail. You email those people on a blind copy, you know, an email to yourself from yourself with all those people blind copied. And you say, hey, you know, friend, we haven't been in touch for a while. You know, um, I'm working on something exciting in the world and I would love to be able to have your permission to stay in touch with you. And then you can take one of two approaches. You know, you can say, uh, click here if you don't if you wish to not be added to my list. Otherwise, I'm going to add you. Or you could uh, say, click here to be added to my list. Um, now, the reason some people opt for the uh, the opt out, like click here if you don't want to be on my list, is because you're not going to get too much uptake if people don't open and read the email and click the button and fill out the form. Um, but the most uh, pure approach would be to say, hey, would you like to be a part of hearing from me? Here's the value you can expect to receive once you've joined my list, and then just do a one-time email to them. Um, in the process of marketing a new book, what I also recommend is that there's a lot of communication that you need to be sending that's more personal, that's more targeted. And the more personal and targeted the information that you send out, the more likely you are to get um, a response and input. Um, and so, you know, while email marketing is exceedingly powerful and I highly recommend it, um, you also can't substitute for that kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, outreach with a more targeted and, and personal message or request. So, Denise, I hope that helps. And I know I'm going so fast because we only have a half an hour. <laughs> I know, we have a lot of questions, which is great. Um, let's see. This one might need more clarification, but I'll ask you anyway. Um, Philip is asking, what do you consider a successful marketing campaign? Well, that is an excellent question, Philip. Um, I actually think that this is similar to the budget question. It's a very individualized response. Um, I think any individual author needs to, at the start of any marketing campaign, define for themselves what success looks like. So, um, you know, I've had some authors say to me, you know, I want to be on the New York Times bestseller list. That's what constitutes success. I want to sell 10,000 books in the first year. That's what constitutes success. Um, I've had other uh, people say, you know, I want to make a difference for um, my community. I want to make a difference for, you know, people in X um, demographic. Um, and so I think it's very important to ask yourself why you're embarking on any marketing campaign and to define for yourself what success looks like and then to measure your results against your own stated goals and objectives. Um, which, you know, I, I don't know if that's uh, that's too far flung. Um, there are a number of different measures that our team uses to uh, measure success of the books that we're launching in the world. You know, book sales is one of them. Um, the business, particularly for a business book author that a book marketing campaign is able to generate or the interest or the awareness um, is another measure. Uh, we also measure success at times by the number of Amazon reviews because those early Amazon reviews are important in providing social proof to our authors. And so if, if one of our goals is to get 50 Amazon reviews, then we're going to measure ourselves against that goal. Um, and if we have 50, then then we've met that goal. If we have 100, then we've exceeded and we feel really good about that. Um, some authors measure success based on the number of media placements that they might get during a campaign or the number of social shares or, um, you know, the buzz, which is somewhat um, elusive to be able to determine on a title. Um, so there are, there are lots of different measures and, again, individual for each author. Do you recommend repeated book bub? I already did one. This is from Sheila. Um, Sheila, that's a great question. Um, it depends, I guess, on the results that you got from the first one compared to your investment. Um, what I've heard is that those book bubs uh, are absolutely magical. Um, and so if you got great results and sold a lot of books that way and, and, and saw some Amazon reviews come through as a result, um, if you can get accepted for that second time out, uh, by all means, go for it. Um, I do know, though, that um, many, many people apply to do those promotions and are, are rejected. Um, it's, it's a very low success rate in terms of people who want to do a book bub versus the ones that they pick. Um, so if, if you can, I would say go for it as long as you are happy with the initial results. I know that we had one author do a book bub in the past few months and uh, he sold something like 
I don't know, a thousand copies of his Kindle edition um, and was exceedingly pleased by that exposure. So um, it really depends on, on how happy you felt with the results. Looks like we have a few more minutes, so if anyone has any additional questions, be sure to enter those into the questions panel. Um, and I did see a question from someone about the Facebook group. I will link to that in the follow-up email that goes out, which everybody who's here today is on the list already. So just make sure you open that email and take a look at the resources that will be inside. Uh, and you'll be able to join the Facebook group and you know continue to ask questions and connect with other people who you know, are just as creative as you are and we can all brainstorm together and learn from each other. Sure. Um, and while we're waiting to see if any additional questions come in, um, I guess there are a few things that I want to make sure everyone knows about. Um, for those of you who are uh, new to Weaving Influence, we're a digital marketing agency and we uh, focus um, mostly on business book authors, although we're expanding um, in the future to include other genres. Um, we also um, have two other divisions to our company. We own leadchangegroup.com, which is a multi-author leadership blog where authors create great new original content on business leadership topics daily. We would love to have you check out leadchangegroup.com. And then uh, we also have um, Hometown Reads, which is a division that we founded, and we're now showcasing authors in 78 locations. Uh, just today, we're, we launched our two newest locations, Iowa City, Iowa, and Columbia, Missouri, and we're looking to expand across the country. So if you're an author, you know, looking for exposure in your own hometown, we encourage you to check out Hometown Reads. It's completely free. And then we also have uh, weavinginfluencelab.com where our course, Book Marketing Action Guide, is available for sale. Um, we're in the process, as I mentioned earlier, of figuring out how to best get that course to the world. It is currently available. Uh, it may not be available for a short time as we gear up for a launch of it in January. So if you're interested, I would encourage you to check that out today. Um, and it looks like we have another question. <coughs> Excuse me. There's two more here. Um, one from Sheila, again, um, she's saying local bookstore owner told me to contact the Regional Trade Association. I did, but nothing came of it. Do you have any thoughts? Um, I guess I would first ask uh, what the purpose of reaching out to the Trade Association was, like what you were looking for. And if you can clarify that, I'm happy to give some input. Okay, and while we wait for that, we have another question from Karen who is asking, uh, my book has been out for a month and I don't feel like sales are where they should be. I've had some coverage in newspaper and blogs. What else should I pursue that might be powerful in terms of raw sales? Okay, so Karen, I, I have no idea what uh, genre your book is in, um, so that might be helpful in terms of answering. Um, if your book is a business or nonfiction title, um, one of the best ways to drive sales is to think about multiplication instead of addition. So if you want to do uh, one book plus one book plus one book, it's going to take a long time to get to the sales level that you want, but on a nonfiction book, if you can think about strategically who might be interested in buying your book in bulk, potentially as a gift or, you know, for employees, you know, a 20 plus 20 plus 20 is going to add up a lot faster than those individual sales. So a strategy around bulk sales of your book might be a good option for you, Karen, as it relates to a nonfiction title. Um, the other thing is uh, that I never want to neglect to say is it's really that focused, consistent effort over time. Um, sometimes it takes books a while to, to take off. Um, you know, I don't know if any of you have heard the statistics about the average number of books that most authors sell, and sales rates and success rates really a lot will be dependent up, upon um, a number of factors, including, um, you know, is your book independently published? Is it traditionally published? Um, those types of things. Um, so without knowing more, I don't know exactly what to recommend, but on nonfiction, um, a strategy around bulk sales is always a a way to add up those sales faster. Um, if you're a speaker of any kind or can do events, events are another great way to drive sales um, in the back of the room. Um, so that might be another consideration for you as well. Even if you're speaking for free about your content to a group, uh, quite often uh, as a result, you'll be able to sell books. 
So I hope that helps. Um, I would also say I think that authors err on the side of not enough email uh, requests to buy the book. Um, I remember one of the very first books we um, launched back in 2012, uh, our author was really uh, willing and committed to email marketing and she sent an email every single day and saw her sales soar. Now most of us you know, might not be very comfortable with sending a sales type email every day for five days, um, but the thing is if you do not ask people to buy your book they will not buy it. And people have a short memory, a short attention span, so you really need to be consistently out there with the message if you want to drive results. Thank you. Um, sure thing. Last one here, we had um, Sheila was following up to your question about, you know, what was the goal in reaching out to the, um, the Regional Trade Association, and she's saying for stores to pick up her book for retail sale. Okay, got it. Yeah, you know, I don't know a lot about that. I do know that um, some of the local authors here in our area have had a lot of success just by going to the independent bookstore owners individually to see if the book will be picked up. Um, now, some stores will not take independently published books. Um, in that case, um, if you've independently published, you might want to consider investing with a distribution channel like Ingram Spark uh, to get your book into more stores um, because it, that is one of the uh, drawbacks of being independently published, uh, which is not having access to those distribution channels. So Sheila, I hope that helps. Thank you, Becky. Sure. Um, so that, that wraps up our time for today. Um, and as I said, I'll send out a follow-up email shortly after we end the call here with some resources in it. So everyone, make sure you open that up and thank you for joining us today. And if you're not already a part of it, I hope to see you in our Facebook group. Have a great day, everyone.